Boy, oh boy, have we got a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, welcome to our look ahead to what the papers are bringing us uh, tomorrow. We are joined by Laura Perrins, co-editor of The Conservative Women, and Joe Watts, political editor of The Independent. Welcome to you both. Uh, let's just have a look at some of the front pages they want to talk about. The I leads of John Major's first speech since the Brexit vote, saying people were duped into Brexit. Much more on that in a moment, I can tell you. The Express claims that the government could announce plans to end free movement of people on the day it triggers Article 50. The Telegraph has an interview with the former UKIP leader Nigel Farage, who says the party will collapse unless it ousts its only MP, Douglas Carswell. President Trump's decision to increase military spending by $54 billion makes The Guardian's front page. The Metro shows the shocked faces of Hollywood's finest. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, after last night's Oscar fiasco over the winner of the best film. Uh, the Times picks up on comments from a senior British police officer suggesting paedophiles should only face criminal sanctions if they pose a physical threat. And the Daily Mail says the BBC's Director General is demanding an urgent investigation of allegations that TV licence fee inspectors are adopting ruthless tactics and targeting vulnerable people. Um, should we start with the eye? Uh, not the only paper, quite a few papers uh, reporting on Sir John Major's uh, speech uh, tonight at Chatham House, uh, where, I mean, the eye have pretty much summed up what he said in, in one sentence, we're being duped on Brexit. Yes, poor John Major, he's come crawling out of a safe space of retirement, it seems, and uh, to second-guess the British people as to uh, what, what's the best way to approach Brexit. I mean, we've moved now from Project Fear, I think, to Pro Project Smear, and now we're now at Project Pathetic, sadly, for uh, John Major. We had Tony Blair last week. I think things are getting a bit desperate for the Romaniacs. I don't know who, who they'll pull out of the woodwork next week to, uh, to denounce this. And he, he does say, I mean, no one is showing contempt for the 48% who voted Remain. And in fact, the really important statistic now is the 68% um, who were polled, I think, last week, who said they just want uh, the Prime Minister now to get on with Brexit, which is exactly what she's doing. Yeah, and there's also been a poll recently um, that, that, by the Evening Standard, I think it was, that, that, that suggested certainly in London, which voted overwhelmingly Remain, that they thought immigration should be the priority, not, not trade, as it, as it seems. So was John Major out of touch with the public tonight, Joe? Well, I don't think so, no. I think, I think what we're seeing here is uh, Brexiteers Let him talk. Let coming him talk. across. Let him talk. I, I can literally feel the heat coming off Laura. My beard hair is getting singed <laughs> on this side is, of my head. Yeah. Um, Glowing. The Brexiteers are getting flustered because actually finally in the last couple of weeks there's been some, some real opposition. The government's actually being held to account in a way that we haven't seen the elected politicians in the House of Commons doing. We've had Tony Blair stand up, make a speech, Lord manelson has been writing, has been all over the place, and now John Major as well. It's not just from one party, it's across several parties, and they're actually making real points about the way the government is approaching Brexit, about the way they're trying to railroad their Article 50 bill through without it being amended, amended in a, in a democratic sense. Democracy, Laura, that's you what Brexit is used to argue for. Through, but um, now they're sure. trying to suggest that it should go through completely unchanged. <laughs> Laura, what is unhealthy about the country continuing to debate what Brexit actually means? Because nobody really knew until the last few weeks no, no, exactly yeah. what it involved. They, they can continue to debate. I just, I just don't think a lot of people are actually going to listen to him, or, or indeed so, Tony Blair, or um, whoever are, will be wheeled out next week, inevitably, because they're not very credible. John Major's record in Europe is, has been disastrous. I mean, talk about railroading. He railroaded Britain into, into mass. Strict, um, and he, it's not, he was it's not about that. John Major and it's not about Tony Blair, it's not about the messenger, mm. it's about the message. But I mean, the, me the, the messenger is very important, as we all know in politics, and these, these, these two former prime ministers are basically completely discredited. And, and if this is the tactic, that's fine. Fill your boots because <laughs> you're going you're to fail on it. And, and you know, that's, that's the way it is. If that's the best you've got, then I'm, I'll I be would, sleeping easy I tonight. would suggest that as time goes on, as uh, the economy starts to you know, feel some of the strain of Brexit after Article 50 is triggered, then their message will start to hit home a little bit more. Well, the Telegraph um, picks up uh, on the fact that uh, Mr Major said leaving the EU is an historic mistake. But he did also say in his speech tonight that he accepts the EU is not perfect. It, it, it's not all fantastic, but he was highlighting what he felt were, were major concerns about the government's handling of the Brexit negotiations and their dealings with EU leaders as well. 
I it's said, quite he, a scathing attack. Yeah, no, it, it, it's scathing and it's, it's also quite bitter. And I, I think it says more about him than it does about um, the Prime Minister, Theresa May, who I, I think is overall doing a fantastic job. Um, as I said, I, I absolutely think he's going to come out of this worse off than, uh, than the Prime Minister is. I said, of course, he's entitled to his opinion and, 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 and people like yourself like, like, to, hear, like to hear it. But um, I, I think... I love it, listening to John Major. It, it, well, yes, I'm sure. It's amazing how the BBC now <laughs> love John Major. When he was in power, they hated John Major. You know, they absolutely slammed him we from absolutely pillar to post. And now he's, and now he's the hero. He's we the hero very of the impartial, hour. Laura, and that's so a the irony is too to much. Say that. Just too to much. bring it back to his message for a moment, look, the basic thrust of his message is this. The government, Theresa May, they're talking a lot about what they want from their Brexit deal. They haven't said anything about what they're going to have to compromise on, about what they're going to have to pay, about what we're going to have to pay. No one is being told that at the moment. And that is a massive black hole in the debate. And all he's doing is saying, look, okay. we need to start talking about this. And okay. I think that's well, the da just okay. The Daily Telegraph also poses the question by interviewing Nigel Farage, what now for Brexit? Where, what, what is there for them to do? How do they go forward as a party now that Brexit is actually happening? And, and, and Nigel Farage, suggesting they get rid of the last standing MP. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's kind of UKIP's problem. I mean, obviously their big problem now is that is Theresa May is going forward to Brexit and, and um, in a very sensible and coherent fashion. So the, the, the reasons for being... I think if there's any slippage on, on the part of May, then you could become very relevant and very important again. But, I mean, we were talking about, I don't know actually how you would get rid of Douglas Carswell, as he's their only MP. He can't, he's either unelected by his constituents or he withdraws the whip from himself, which yeah. seems unlikely. So I'm not really too sure how that's going to happen. The whole story kind of points to the, the sort of underlying ridiculousness of UKIP because they, they only have this one MP who's in, in, at constant odds with the other people in the party, people like Nigel Farage and of course Aaron Banks is always floating there, sort of demanding to take over the party. And you never know with UKIP, at any moment Nigel Farage might come back and be leader. And it kind of looks like you had Aaron Banks calling for, for him to play a greater role in the party, Paul Nuttall's in trouble. It kind of looks like maybe Farage might just get back in there. Um, the Daily Express uh, headline, tough new EU migrant rules, free movement could be ended within weeks. Um, this is something that not everybody might have thought about, uh, Laura, that, that the migrant rules might have to kick in the moment Article 50 does. Yes, well, it, it, it will be interesting to see if it's when Article 50 is triggered or at the end of negotiations. I mean, the, the, the key issue, though, is that whatever the migration rules are, is that it's decided in Westminster and not in Brussels. You know, it's, it's decided by uh, democracy as opposed to bureaucrats in Brussels. Um, and uh, as the bill goes through, there, no, there, will, be, there, will, there will be suitable scrutiny um, and examination of what the rules actually should be, um, which, is, which is how democracy works. Um, whether or not it does happen when Article 50 is triggered. Um, everybody will be given... The, the important point is that people are given adequate notice. It can't be done retroactively. And if it was, um, if the rules did change when Article 50 was actually triggered, then I think that's, that's fair enough in terms of notice given to people coming into the country. Um, let's move on to the Times. Um, Joe, uh, a headline there that, that uh, will worry many people, I'm sure. Uh, don't lock up low-risk paedophiles. This um, is uh, a quote from the police. Public will be horrified at meets uh, the mm. uh, Chief Constable. Just give us the background to this. Um, so this is the uh, Britain's most senior child protection officer, Simon Bailey, and he's basically saying that the, the police have been inundated with investigations into child sex abuse, into paedophilia, and... Uh, the, the rise has been so intense, 80% in three years, they say they're getting 112 new complaints a day and they're expecting a further 40,000 from the uh, official inquiry that's happening into ch child sexual abuse and historic sexual abuse. They're basically saying they're, they're overspilling and they can't deal with it all. And because of that, some of the lesser offences, if you can possibly call them that, are going to have to be, in his words, decriminalised. Now, I think that's going to horrify most people, and even he acknowledges that this stance will horrify mm. a lot of people, but he's basically saying we have no choice. Now, the question seems to be of resources, at least he's raising that here. So is it simply a, a question of money? Uh, you know, can you solve this problem by hiring lots more police officers? I don't know if it's going to be as simple as that, but nonetheless, it's going to be a real, a real shocking story. In, in, in some ways, Laura, it, it is reassuring that the police are overwhelmed with cases because that means people are feeling that they can step forward and, 
and report people and, and, and they will be believed. But it, it's well, I, I think there's two key points about it. And, and the first is, it's not just a question of, of not locking them up, because if you're convicted of something, you can, you can often receive a non-custodial sentence. But what really worries me about this is that um, it, he's saying they shouldn't be given any criminal sanction, which could mm. have a knock-on effect. That means that you, if it's not on your record, then you'd be, free, you, you'd be free to work with children. Um, so that, that's the first issue. Um, but, and, and also, looking, looking at indecent images, um, I mean, it, it's wrong to say that this is a victimless crime because the, the poor children who are in those images, and you can get, you can get there is a scale, I mean, um, there is a scale from, from minor, and people might not like the word, but there is a scale from minor to incredibly just incredibly dangerous images. I think they're level five. And to say that these are victimless crimes is completely wrong because, you know, the, um, these children are being abused in these images mm. and, and there wouldn't be a market for it if people didn't look at it. I think it just, it just points to this idea that they're trying to slightly change the way society views these crimes. And I think a lot of people will, you know, across the political spectrum probably agree that actually the way we see it as a horrific crime at the moment is probably the right way to see it. You, I mean, you can, you can deal with the sentence in different ways, but there absolutely should be a criminal sanction and the police shouldn't be saying we're not going to investigate what can be a very serious crime. Um, the Guardian um, devotes uh, quite a lot of its front page to uh, politics in America, actually, unlike uh, other papers. Trump plans huge increase in US uh, military spending. This is a 54 billion pound hike, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, uh, I mean, I suppose on one level you've got to give credit to Trump. You know, he made lots of bonkers promises during the election campaign and he's delivering on his bonkers promises. So uh, I'm, I'm saying that especially for your, your credit, Laura. I know you're going to come in a minute. But he has basically said he's going to uh, remove spending from uh, environmental policy and from aid spending too. Um, interestingly, there's a huge clamour in the UK as well to redirect spending from those particular areas, possibly to uh, the military or, or indeed to the NHS is something uh, that a lot of Tory MPs are talking about at the moment as well, or indeed the social care system too. Um, nonetheless, uh, Trump has uh, promised to reinvigorate industry in America as well. And of course, it's a very easy way to do that by building lots of new tanks, ships, uh, guns, whatever the military needs. Well, I mean, defending your country is not a bonkers promise. I, I actually like sleeping under the protection that the United States gives us, as, 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 you, do, uh, as you do also, Will. I think Italy also takes advantage of it, even though they have hardly any, they spend hardly anything on their military and Spain. So Europe certainly likes being protected by, by America and the American military, um, who obviously also liberated Europe from, from fascism. Um, but, you know, putting all that from aside, he is absolutely entitled to um, fulfill his electoral promise to defend his country. And I think anybody who doesn't think defending your own country and defending your liberty and security is a, is a bonkers idea should take a long, hard look at themselves. But it comes at a cost, doesn't it, to environmental protection, uh, aid as well, helping other countries. It's, it, it, I mean, it is what he promised, Laura, it's, it's, but it's it, causing a, a lot of concern. It's, well, it's only causing a lot of concern to people who are incessantly we ideologically to opposed to Trump. And, and help other countries <laughs> yeah, well, that are starving to per, death. Per, yeah. Personal Laura, protection so is very important. we're going to leave it there, but many thanks uh, for taking us through the papers, and thanks for the interesting discussion about Sir John Major. We'll continue that. Uh, don't forget, you can see the front pages of the papers online by the way at the BBC News website it's all there for you seven days a week bbc.co.uk forward slash papers and if you want to watch the programme again or you miss some of it it's all there for you on iPlayer thank you to Laura and Joe thanks to you for watching